8. Draw the Lewis structures for CO2 and CO and predict the number of sigma and pi bonds for each molecule. Okay, pretty straightforward. Just know that I said words for these symbols. So anytime that you see this symbol, this is always a sigma. So we're talking about sigma bonds. And this you've probably seen in your math class, that's pi. So we have to just determine how many sigma bonds and how many pi bonds we have. So I'm just going to split this down the middle because I have to draw CO2. And I have to draw, maybe I'll put CO over here. Maybe we'll start both of them down. Okay. So, for Lewis structures, remember the least electronegative element goes in the middle. So carbon is less electronegative than oxygen. So carbon in the middle, in this case surrounded by two oxygen. And for this one, it's just a carbon and an oxygen. Let's put the valence electrons on. Carbon is in group 14 or 4A, but the 4 is the important number because there's four valence electrons for carbon. So one, two, three, four, and I'll do the same thing here. One, two, three, four. I'll just maybe bring this out a little bit. And then oxygen, who is in group 16 or 6A, the six is the important number. They have six valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, I guess. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll do one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so single bond them up. We'll now just focus just on CO2. So we single bond and see if we have the octet rule, right? Single bond, single bond. And the oxygen has two, four, six, seven electrons, and the carbon only has two, four, five, six. So I'm going to have to put in one electron here, one electron here to get that double bond. So let's see if I now bond these two. I have a double bond. Let's just put these in the middle. And now oxygen looks good. Two, four, six, eight electrons. But the carbon, eh, not so much. Two, four, right? Two, four, yeah, two, four, six, seven. So we have to make another bond. So maybe I'll just bring this down. This guy goes up. There we go. Let's bond it out. Put it in the middle, make it look nice and pretty. And there we go. For CO, let's just do the same thing. So single bond them. And carbon has two, three, four, five. So that's not good. So we're going to try again. Boop, boop. So we need the double bond, two, four, five, six electrons. But look here, go though, guys, because the oxygen has the octet, two, four, six, eight. So it's not that I'm going to do one for one because that's going to mess up the oxygen. What's going to happen here is that since oxygen is more electronegative, both of these electrons go in and say, hey, we could share. One of these can go over to you and we can bond, right? Now, technically they're overlapping in the orbitals, but just to show you that, you know, it basically is shared both. These are both oxygens. And if I just now maybe bring this over here, they both have the octet. This carbon has two, right? Two, four, six, eight electrons. And so does the oxygen, two, four, six, eight. Okay. So now we just have to predict the number of sigma and pi bonds. So just know that in any type of bond that you see, I don't care whether it's a sigma, a single bond, a double bond, or a triple bond, the, the similarities between a single bond, a double bond, and a triple bond is that they all consist of one, pi, uh, one sigma bond. That's the framework. You got to lay down the framework. That's the first bond that's made. And then the extra bonds, if you have any, are the pi bonds. So in a double bond, one has to be the sigma bond, right? So this has to be one sigma. Here's another double bond. This has to be one sigma. And here's a triple bond. This has to be one sigma. Now the rest of the bonds are pi bonds. 
So for a double bond, since you only have one bond left over, right, that's going to be the one pi bond. And one sigma plus one pi is a total of two bonds. That's a double bond. So this would be one pi. And now here I have one sigma, so I have two left over. That's two pi bonds. So now we can just say, uh, and maybe, yeah, I guess we'll say sigma bond. Actually, I'll just draw it this way. Sigma bond and pi bond, because we have to just tally them up. And then over here, I'll put, okay, total amount of sigma and total amount of pi bonds. And now since everything is accounted for, all we just have to do is just add them up. So for the sigma, seems like I have one plus one. So I have a total of two sigma bonds. And then for the pi bond, I have one pi here, one pi here. So I just add them up and I get two pi. So I have one sigma and one pi bond on my CO2 molecule. And I'm just going to do the same exact thing for over here. And did anybody catch this? I must have been saying the number one while I was writing, trying to write the number two. But there you go, right? A triple bond should always have one sigma and two pi. Were you screaming at your computer or your laptop? I heard you, and that's why I changed it. So in this case, we just have one sigma bond and two pi bonds because it's just a triple bond. And there you go. And those are your answers. What'd you think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I hope you're having a great day out there. Let's keep studying hard. I believe in you guys. Good luck on your tests and quizzes. And I'll be here every step of the way helping you out. All right? Tell your friends. Tell your classmates about this cool YouTube channel. Just gets the word out there that this channel exists. And if you want to subscribe, we're almost at 30,000 subscribers. And we would love for you to be part of this community. Thank you so much for the support. And I'll be talking to you soon. Bye-bye.